Hey guys, welcome back to the Mount Juliet Library. My name is Mr. Terza and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than we've done before. We're going to take a look at the whole entire universe. Now if we're going to talk about the whole entire universe, that's kind of a big pill to swallow. So what I found over the years is, is instead of just talking about the universe, let's start small and gradually work our way up. So here we are in beautiful downtown Mount Juliet. Now if we take Mount Juliet, hook it up with Lebanon, hook it up with Watertown, what we've got is we've got Wilson County. Then if we were to take Wilson County, hook it up with the other 94 counties that we have here in the great state of Tennessee, we have a state that we call Tennessee. Then from there, if we take Tennessee, hook it up with the other 49 states, now we've got a country. So look at what we're doing, folks. We're starting with the town, then from there we're going into a county, from a county we're going into a state, and now we're going into a country. Now let's take our one country, the United States, hook it up with Canada and Mexico, now we've got a continent. Then we're going to take our one continent, North America, hook it up with the other six continents, also add the oceans, and lo and behold, here we are, we're talking about planet Earth. And when we're talking about the universe, this is going to be our starting point. We're going to start with our own planet and work our way out. So here's the basic premise I want you guys to understand. We're starting small and gradually working our way further and further out till things that we're talking about are going to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So let's start with planet Earth and the moon that orbits around it. If we add a couple of other planets, then we're going to have the first beginnings of our solar system. Then we add the other planets to our solar system. Now we've got the whole entire solar system. From there, we're going to start to move out. We'll try and catch the uh, closest stars around us. We put in literally millions and billions and billions of stars. Now we're going to have our galaxy. Then we're going to start to add galaxies together, billions and billions and billions of them. And what we're going to have is we're going to have our one universe. So we start with the planet which orbits around a relatively minor star that we call Sol. That's going to become the center of our solar system which will become part of our galaxy and we're going to start to move out from there. Okay? Once we leave our solar system, when we're talking about our solar system, we're talking about one star, we're talking about eight planets. Once we move out of there and we start talking about galaxies, the numbers are going to change dramatically. Instead of numbers like eight and one and however many moons we've got, now we're going to start talking about millions and billions and billions and billions, okay? For example, our one solar system, if we put it together with the other billions and billions of solar systems that we have in our galaxy, we'll put it together and we're now going to have the one Milky Way galaxy. Now, from there we have to talk about something called the law of uniformitarianism. The law of uniformitarianism says that whatever happens over here on planet Earth is going to be happening all throughout the universe. Unitarianism, uni, there's one law that's going to be universally applied throughout the solar system, throughout the universe. For example, gravity. If I take this pointer and if I drop it, it better fall down. If I drop it and it starts to fall up, well, you know what, guys? We got really major problems then, because that means the laws of gravity do not work. From what we have seen so far in our solar system, Every single planet has been visited by the United States, and in each case we have found that the laws of gravity work. I'm not saying we landed on each and every one of them, but we have orbited around them, and what keeps a, a space capsule in orbit around the planet is the fact that gravity works. We've seen that temperatures are going to change all throughout the solar system based upon closeness or distance away from our heat source, which is going to be the star, our sun. This is what the law of uniformitarianism says. So whatever applies over here in our solar system applies all throughout the universe. 
That means that since our particular solar system has a star with eight planets that are orbiting around it gravitationally held together, then this must be true of all of the stars that exist in our universe. So that means we've got billions and billions of stars, each of those billions and billions of stars having anywhere between five to 10 to 15 planets being gravitationally held in together. We put all this stuff together and that's going to be our universe. It seems relatively simple to understand, but now let's add a little bit of a wrinkle to it. What we're looking at over there is a simulated image of a black hole that we know is going to be found in our nearest next door neighbor, the Large Magellanic Cloud. That's our closest galaxy. Now, many astronomers, we understand what a black hole is. We understand that a black hole is a source of tremendous gravitational pull, so intense that even light can't escape from a black hole. Now, we understand that anything around that black hole literally gets gravitationally swallowed up and it disappears. But what some astronomers say is this, it doesn't really disappear. What happens is whatever is going through the black hole is popping out on the other side and there's another universe on each different side of the black hole. When you consider that there are literally billions and billions and billions of black holes, each capable of swallowing up that particular galaxy and then it pops out the other side. That means that in addition to our one universe, the odds are pretty good that we've got billions and billions of other universes. That means our one universe, uni, might not really be true. There might be billions and billions and billions of other universes. Ms. Laterza, you're hurting my brain. Stop it. Okay, let's just concentrate on our solar system. A solar system is simply a combination of a star and planets and other uh, objects like moons and dark matter that are gravitationally being held together. So what we've got is we've got our one star that we call Sol, and we've got eight planets that are gravitationally held together. Now, I've told you guys before that I've been teaching a long time. In fact, this fall is going to be my 51st year teaching. But what you may not know is I've taught every grade level from pre-kindergarten all the way up to graduate university. And when I talk about planets, I teach the same thing to my kindergartners as I teach to my graduate university students. Planets are like belly buttons. You've got innies and you've got outies. Now let's take a look at our solar system. The innies are Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, and what we call the terrestrial planets. These planets are very, very small in size. They've got a low number of moons. In fact, with the four planets, there are only three moons. We've got our moon that we call Luna, and then there's Deimos and Phobos, which orbit around Mars. They're not really moons. They're literally just big chunks of rock that have been gravitationally captured by Mars. So there's only three moons. We've got no rings at all going around those planets. They have a slow period of rotation. For example, Earth and Mars are between 24 and 25 hours as it rotates around on its axis, causing day and night. Mercury rotates once every 59 days, and Venus's rate of rotation is once every 243 Earth days. Those are ridiculously slow. The inner planets, they're inner because they are close to the sun and they have a rocky core, meaning that they are very, very dense planets. The opposite, the Audis, are what we call the Jovian planets. They're massive. For example, let's take Jupiter. Imagine Jupiter had a belt going around it and you wanted to hang planet Earth from that belt you'd be able to hang over 1,000 planet Earths from that particular belt over there. That's how massive it is. All of those, those particular outer planets have got lots and lots of moons. For example, Jupiter, all by itself, it has 63 moons. Saturn has in the neighborhood of between 30 and 40 moons. Uranus and Neptune, they've got about a dozen moons each. 
We used to think that only Saturn had rings going around it, but as we started to get Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 out there, we realized that they've got rings as well going around it. They rotate ridiculously fast. As massive as Jupiter is, it rotates on its axis once every 10 hours. They're very far away from Sol, or meaning very far away from the Sun. And while the inner planets are solid and rocky, the outer planets have very low density and they are gaseous in nature. Uh, Jupiter and Saturn, they're basically he uh, helium and hydrogen, whereas Uranus and Neptune are going to be methane and nitrogen gases. But they are gases. So completely different. Uh, Mr. Latarius, what about Pluto? Not the dog doofus, I mean the planet. Okay, Pluto used to be a planet. When I was a kid and the dinosaurs wandered around planet Earth, we were taught my very excellent mother just sent us nine pizzas. If you remember that, you're always going to remember the planets because the first letter of each of those words is going to be the name of a planet. My, Mercury, Very, Venus, da 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 So my very excellent mother just sent us nine pizzas. That's what I was taught. However, in the year 2006, Pluto was declassified as a planet and reclassified as what we call a dwarf planet. Now, there are all sorts of different reasons why they did that, but essentially what it is is simply this. In order for a planet to be called a planet, it has to gravitationally clear a path out. Well, because the mass of, G of Pluto is so incredibly small, it's smaller than our moon, it doesn't clear the debris away. So that means it doesn't have a clear orbital path. They say that can't make it a planet. Plus, the other thing, in order to make it a planet, you have to have the planet, and if you have moons, those moons have to revolve around the planet. Well, as it turns out, Pluto has got five moons, four of them incredibly tiny, but the one moon that we normally talk about is Chiron. Here's Pluto. Chiron does indeed orbit around Pluto. Duh, Miss Letarza, that should make it a planet. No, because that's not the whole story. The whole story is as Chiron is orbiting around Pluto, Pluto is orbiting around Chiron. Bizarre. Because of that fact, that's the biggest reason why we turn around and say that Pluto is not really a planet. So my very excellent mother just sent us nine pizzas, now becomes my very excellent mother just sent us, and you're on your own, nine something or other, okay? But that's where we are. Okay, guys, next time we get together, we're going to move away from our solar system and to cheat on the words that Captain Kirk has said in Star Trek, we are going to boldly go where no one has gone before. We're going to look at our Milky Way galaxy, then all sorts of neat stuff that's found out there. Take care, guys. <laughs>